everyone, my name is Sinead. Quick word of empathy to any of the May students who are going through COVID-19 as well as going through their May exams. I feel you guys and that's partially why I'm making this video. I did a video which a lot of people viewed and a lot of people liked where I went through my math IA and lots of people were asking me questions on how I did that. So yeah, in this video I'm going to be taking through how you can actually do this method. In this video, uh, we're just going to go through how to find the fractal dimension using the cosine method. So let's get started. Also, by the way, I'm in Bali, trapped in my house, so that's why there's like birds and noises everywhere, but I can't do anything about that, and yeah. Right, so the first thing that you need to understand is what is the fractal dimension? Now, the fractal dimension is basically a number that tells you how complex the coastline is. Just for background information, watch these videos, because they're going to really help you understand. Okay, so what the fractal dimension is, is that it's basically a number between 1 and 2, that tells you how complicated a coastline is. So a coastline, like for, so for example, Great Britain, right? This coastline is super complicated. And you can't really measure the length of its coastline, right? But what you can measure is how complex it is. And the more complex it is, the more closer it is to two. So if it's a really smooth coastline, then it's close to one. So for example, Great Britain compared to South Africa. Great Britain will have a much higher fractal dimension than South Africa because the coastline of Great Britain is so much more complicated than South Africa. South Africa's coastline is pretty smooth as you can see, whilst Great Britain has all of these curves and edges into it. So Great Britain is like about, the official number is like 1.26 and I think South Africa is like 1.03 or something, right? So it has a much lower fractal dimension. So the question comes down to how can you actually calculate this number? Well, you can actually do that quite simply using various different methods. This is actually a theory that Mandel brought, proposed in his paper. And you can read that if you want. The important thing about his paper is that in his paper, he, he gave this equation. L equals mg to the power of 1 minus d. Now, what does that mean? Well, L, that is the length of the coastline. M is just a proportionality constant, G is the length of the ruler, and 1 minus D is the fractal dimension. Now, don't worry, this isn't as complicated as we may see. So, what's it saying is that the length of the coastline is dependent on the length of the ruler to the power of 1 minus the fractal dimension. So in his paper, Mandelbrot described how L largely depends on G. So if you make G smaller, you're able to pick up more finer, finer details and thus L increases. So, what this is telling us is that we, if we can measure the length of the coastline and the length of the ruler that we use to measure the coastline, then we can just rearrange and solve for D. So, if you've done logarithm, then you should understand this derivation. We're gonna try and solve for D so that we can uh, write a, an equation in the form of Y equals MX plus C so that we can uh, find the value of D. So, we start with L equals mg to the power of 1 minus d. And then we're going to take a log of both sides. Because remember, we're trying to find, we want to get d as like a subject on its own that we can find using a y equals mx plus c equation. Then we're going to, then through log laws, we know we can split those up into log m, log m plus log g to the 1 minus d. Now, as you can see, we can take that 1 minus d out. So we're going to take that out. And then we're going to take that out and put that at the front. And now, as you can see, we have a y equals mx plus c equation. So log l equals log m plus 1 minus d log g. Now, if we make y equals log l, and log m will just be a proportionality constant that we can ignore. And then if we plot x as log g, then m will just equal 1 minus d. Now this may seem confusing, but if you've watched the videos that I've told you to watch, then you should be able to pick up and understand what's happening. So now, what do you actually have to do in order to uh, plot this y equals mx plus c graph? Well, basically, as you can see in this equation, right, what we need to do is that we need to find a bunch of samples of the length of the cosine, and we need a bunch of samples of the length of the ruler. So what we eventually want is we want a table that looks like this. So in this example, I've done Great Britain. What I've done is I've placed a bunch of rulers on the edge of the coastline. Now this doesn't have to be like perfect. You kind of just do it by eye. You don't have to like, oh my God, where do I do it? You just put it where you think 
you would put it if you were measuring a coastline. One thing people ask me is, is that how do you know what size of the ruler you do? Well, when you get the photo of Great Britain, you have to find one that has a scale on it. So I know that e each of these rulers is 200 kilometers because when I copied and pasted this photo from the internet, I specifically chose a picture of a country that had like a scaling on it. So I measured this ruler based off the scaling that was already in the photo. And then what I would do is I would make that ruler half as small. So each time I would go half as small. So I would do a 200 meter ruler, and then I would do a 100 meter ruler, and then I would do a 50 meter ruler, and then I would do a 25 meter ruler. And I would take each of these rulers and copy and paste them all across the edge of the coastline. And then what you would get as a result of doing that is that you would get a bunch of lengths of rulers, which is G, and then you would get a, a bunch of lengths of coastlines, which the length of the coastline is simply the number of rulers you have times the length of the ruler. So we have a bunch of G's and we have a bunch of L's and we can plot this in our Y equals MX plus C equation. Well, so what you would do is you would plot log L against log G and then you can find the gradient. And what the gradient gives you is it gives you the next step towards the fractal dimension. Because as remember before from our derivation, we found that the fractal dimension is equal to 1 minus the gradient. So after you plot this thing, then you go 1 minus gradient and then you get the fractal dimension. Now uh, what a lot of people have asked me is how do I actually like do this? How do I like do this on the app? Can I do this uh, by hand? How can I do this? Now there's various ways that you can do this. So how I did it is I used Photoshop. So Photoshop is an app that you pay for but you can get a free trial if you have like a credit card and you're willing to like you know do the few week trial for that. But you know some people may not be able to do that so you're gonna have to try and find your own uh, software to do this by yourself. So now we're gonna go through an example of how I actually did this on Photoshop and how I made it work. So for example, if I wanted to find the fractal dimension of Australia, first I would go on Google and I would type Australia with scale because it's really important to make sure you have a scale with it as well. And I would look at images and I would try and find a picture of Australia which has a scale. So for example, this one, that one's got a watermark on it. It doesn't really matter what the image looks like as long as it's got the outline of the coastline on it. So for example, this one, it, this one has a nice scale of 1,000 kilometers. So I'm gonna take that image. Uh, I think I'll just screenshot it. Yeah, and then I'm gonna put it into my um, photo editing software of choice. Photoshop is, is genuinely really good at this, but if you can't get Photoshop, torrent it, and if you can't torrent it, try and find a cheap free one online, but if you can get Photoshop, it makes things a lot better. So I'm gonna put Australia into Photoshop. So I'm gonna take my rectangle making button, I'm gonna go like that, and I'm gonna make a rectangle. And this rectangle is gonna be my ruler. Now you can like make it fancy, make it look nice, so the nice thing about Photoshop is that what you can do is that you can like eat really easily move it around. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're just going to pick a place to start. It doesn't really matter where you start and it doesn't really matter like like how accurate it is. You just need to do it by eye. So what you're going to try and do is you're trying is you're just going to try and fill um, the fill it up around Australia. So I'm going to start there. And the buttons I'm using is is uh, Command T and Command C and Command and Command V. So I'm gonna co so that's my first ruler done and dusted. So now I'm gonna copy that Command copy and then I'm gonna Command V and I'm gonna paste that and then I'm gonna do another one. Okay, so this case, why? What do I do? Do I like try and get that little curve? No, that's okay because it's your first ruler. When you get smaller rulers, then you'll have to go through that. Okay, and then I'm going to copy and paste, and I'm going to make sure I'm not on auto-select as well, that's important. Look, I'm not really good at this at the moment, but like, it's better to try and get as much of the coastline as possible, but this is, this is, this is just an example. And then I'm going to copy and paste and redo it. You see how when you have big rules, you just kind of like ignore all the details, that's totally fine. And there, copy, paste. And put it up there. 
And I'm gonna continue to do this all around the coastline. And I wanna, tr hmm. Okay, so that's like a half of a ruler. Okay, so now, now that I've done this, now I actually have some interesting data. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open Excel. You can convert this into a nice looking Word document later. So first thing we're gonna want is we're gonna want the length of the length of the ruler. We're gonna write that. And for us in this case, that was 200. 200 kilometers, but you don't need the kilometers. Then you're gonna want the log of log, and we're gonna call this variable L. Then you're gonna want to have log L, because remember we're plotting logs, not just the value. That's important. Then we're gonna want to have um, the number of rulers, because now we're gonna try and get the length of the actual coastline. So number of rulers, so you're gonna have to count the rulers. And in this case, we're just gonna have to count these up. What, this is gonna be a half. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven point five. So number of rules, eleven point five. And then now we're gonna write length of the coastline. Actually, let's change these variables. This is supposed to be G. Length of the coastline is, um, and that, what is the length of the coastline? The length of the coastline is the length of all of these black rulers put together. So all that is, is the length of the ruler times the number of rulers that there are. So this is just gonna equal 200 because two times this. Yep, and then we get the length of the coastline. And then obviously we're gonna need the log of the coastline. This is just names, log of L, and which we're gonna calculate later. Okay, and then after that, what do you do? Well, what you do is that you do this again for various different sizes of rulers. So what I'm gonna do, oh, it's not 200 kilometers, it's 1,000 kilometers, my bad. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this, and this is, the, this is why you need to get Photoshop opposed to anything else. So I'm gonna take this rectangle, copy paste. I'm going to flip it on its side, make it as straight as possible. And then I'm gonna bring it down here to the ruler thing. And then I'm just going to estimate, okay, that's, like you can do this with the rulers. Let's see if we can do that. Um, rulers. Right, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one here. I'm gonna bring a ruler here. And then I'm gonna make sure I have one that's halfway. So you can just go that by typing in rulers, getting rulers, and then you drag from here all the way there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to make a ruler of half the size, like that. That's a bit fat, but oh well. Uh, so I'm going to ruler like that. And then now I can use this one, and then I'm going to redo the process. So get a new image, and then and then use this ruler and place it all around Australia. And then you're going to do that for at least four different. Uh, and then you're gonna do that for at least four different sizes of rulers. Now, does the ruler size matter? Well, I would recommend just doing half, half, and half, like just like halving it each time. You could do like, like, like you could do like quarters or whatever, I don't know. But that's like, it doesn't really matter as long as you have four different uh, variables. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna, the length of the ruler is always, gonna change so that's gonna be 500 eventually then it's gonna be 250 then it's gonna be 125 and then what you're gonna have to do is count the number of rulers for each of those times and then you're gonna calculate the length of the coastline which is just equal to the length of the ruler times the number of rulers and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna get calculated values for log G and log L and those are what you're gonna use in order to plot your graph so once you get your log L, your log G and your log L values, then you make a graph of it. So I'm not going to do that because I'm, I'm just going to use the example I have in my IA. So if you can look in this example, right, what I did is that I got the length of the ruler, I made that a log, log G, and then I got the length of the coastline, and then I log L that, 
and then I plotted the log L against the log G and then I got this graph and then from that graph I found the gradient of that graph which was uh, minus 0 0.2694 that's the gradient and then all I did was solve for the fractal dimension so the fractal dimension D is equal to the gradient minus 1 so from the graph the gradient is 0 0.2694 so D is equal to 1 minus negative 0 0.2694. So the fractal dimension is 1 is 1 1.2694. And then I just rounded that up to 1.27. Okay? So I hope that makes sense. Uh, that's the Hofstad method. And that's all for this video. And the next video, I think I'm going to make a video about the box counting method and how to implement that if anyone wants it. I might not, I'm not sure, but um, that's a bit more complicated to explain. But yeah, that's how I did that. And good luck with the IA. Stay safe, stay healthy, uh, wash your hands and social distance and do all that stuff. But anyways, uh, that's all for this video and goodbye.